Hello everyone, this is Pascal Goulet from Robert Brink Neal & Associates. I'm going to show you today the fillet edge command, the basic workflow and what all those options are. If you're new to Rhino or even if you're not, the fillet edge command can be a little intimidating. There's a lot of stuff on the command line and the workflow is maybe not as obvious as it could be, so I'm just going to try to clarify that if I can. So the command we're talking about is fillet edge. It's on the solid menu, fillet edge. You'll see there's a submenu with blend edge and chamfer edge as well. Those are identical in terms of user interface. They make a, a different surface, but everything I cover here for fillet edge should work out exactly the same in those other two commands. So we'll look at uh, just fillet edge, which is by far the most common of the three to use in general modeling. So we'll start the command and um, the prompt is for edges to fillet. So the basic input, and we're gonna do this very quickly to start with, just pick some edges, and you click on them and they light up. You'll notice when you click on an edge and it highlights in the yellow highlight color, a number appears right next to that edge. That is the radius of the fillet that you're gonna get if you don't do anything else. If we just hit enter here and just finish the command, we would have those selected edges filleted at a radius of two. You'll notice that on the command line, there's the show radius equals yes, which is the default. You can turn those radii, uh, those little uh, tags that show you the radius off. That might be useful sometimes in a crowded scene. These can, you'll see later, maybe we, we can see how you might want to just toggle those on and off just to see the edges that you have selected. So that's what that's for, and we'll leave it on for now. The next one is kind of key, next radius equals two. So that's what's setting this number. When we get a 2.000 here, that's because the next radius is set to two. If we want to click that and set it to something else like three, then when we click on another edge, and you can just keep going here and fill it edge, you just keep picking edges, you'll see that it is that now set to three. And so whatever edge I click on from now on was going to be three until I just make a change there. Okay. Uh, one thing to remember is this is the initial radius that is going to be set on those edges. If you make a mistake, you get halfway through and you realize some of those edges are wrong, don't panic. Just keep going. There are several ways to fix it. You'll have plenty of opportunity to deal with the radii in the second stage of this command. The command is kind of in two stages. One is selecting edges, and the other one is dealing with the radii and the rails and all sorts of stuff in a little bit more granular detail. So selection is by clicking. And like in regular Rhino, when you control click in a selected edge, it deselects. So you can add and remove, select, deselect edges. Window selection works just like in Rhino's geometry. If you window around a bunch of edges, they will be selected. If you use control and window around those same edges, they'll be deselected. Crossing selections work in exactly the same way as with regular Rhino objects. If I window around left to right, I get all the edges that fall within that window. If I window around right to left like this, I get all the edges that are touched by that rectangle, same as in Rhino. Okay, so you can add and subtract edges that way. Notice also that you don't have to select all the edges on one object, right? I can add edges that are on a different object and Rhino's quite happy to keep going. 